بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم This is the English translation of the Majlis of Hazamara Qamur Zaman Sahib Damad Barakatuhum which took place on Monday the 31st of October 2022 the Islamic date 4th of Rabi'ul Akhir 1444 the majlis took place at about 11 a.m. at Jama Masjid Sogar Tapi Gujarat India <coughs> Hazrat Wala is saying that I came here many times in the past however today I feel very sad and grieved that Maulana used to be here and he used to meet with so much of happiness and so wholeheartedly he even took bed at my hands and I gave him khilafat as well in fact his wife was from amongst the first people to take bed at my hands <coughs> He was an amazing person very punctual with his azkar and his zikr Allah taala reward him abundantly Hazrat Mawlana Muhammad Ahmad Saab used to say that saying subhanallah once this entire world cannot contain the reward of it you people are very fortunate that even in the last time and moments you are what molana you are what i see this uh, silsila that is carrying on like just how my son is doing in uh, ikkar so allah taala keep all these silsilas uh, continuous and let them flow and continue it's very very famous mautul alim Mawtul Alam, the demise of an alim is like the demise and death to the entire world. There is no exchange for it because we are going through the times of inhitat, absolute degeneration. The muhaddithin left us and they went, but there was no one to take their place. Similarly, the mashayikh as well. Nevertheless the silsila continues and goes on after the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam or at the demise of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam there was no greater calamity than that however Abu Bakr radiyallahu ta'ala an continued with the work Yeah, as well. This is how it should be. Maulana was an alim, great alim, and he came to Ilahabad as well. Allah Taala reward him abundantly. Al ulama warathatul ambiya. Now Allama Sharani says. that man warathatul anbiya that who are the heirs or the inheritors of the anbiya and then he answers himself by saying aqulu he says i say my opinion is this that that person who practices on the knowledge that he has so every alim should make mehnat on this year that he practices on the knowledge that he has so we have the external ilm and knowledge and the internal ilm and knowledge as well zahiri ilm and the batini nisbat so allah taala make us inheritors and heirs of the external aspects as well and the internal aspects in fact after the acquisition of that nisbat and the batin the internal noor uh, then a person can be called an alim in the true sense who are they al alimun al amilun those alims that practice as well 
So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Sahaba, they adorn themselves with these characteristics of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would carry out ruku and then it is it was as if he was just going to stay in ruku then he made sajda but such a lengthy sajda now all of this here wasn't it denoting something of the internal aspects so we are making an effort for our a'mal but similarly we should make an effort for our ahwal as well so how we're making mehnat for ilm and nubuwat, we're gaining knowledge. Similarly, nur and uh, nur and nubuwat, we should uh, uh, make an effort for that. Hazrat Manana Shah Fazl Rahman, great muhaddith, Bukhari teacher, and students gathered and he started teaching. And after some while, a loud screeching sound left him which left the people uh, we could say unconscious but such a type of thing i mean that that was some internal aspects that cave that hal that uh, spirituality etc nevertheless what was his remark after that he said listen uh, i teach bukhari sharif like this So Allah Ta'ala bless us with ilm and nubuwat as well and the nur of nubuwat also. These stalwarts and these personalities possessed both of them. Molana has left us. In fact, when we left some, met some time, uh, what, what did he say? That he said to me that Molana, I am going to uh, Baroda. However, what can we say? that death is inevitable aane wali kisse taali jayegi jaan tehri jaane wali jayegi this death which is coming and approaching us who can divert it who can uh, repel it who can drive it away no one rather your breath stops and your soul then leaves no person can ever stop this neither a Nabi nor a Sahabi, no one. Yes, what we all can do is definitely uh, make preparations for it. If we are involved and engaged in activities of Deen, then death will come in that way uh, or in that way, yeah, in that way that uh, that we are in Deen. Our entire lives, a person his entire life, he's saying the Kalima Tayyiba. Then tell me at the time of death, will he forget that Kalima Tayyiba? No. There's a Waqiya of a Buzruk. He passed away. And then how we understand it is that when the angels come in his cover, ready there to question him. Rather, he reprimands them and he sends them from there. That what do you think? That I just came two foot down into the grave and I would forget everything that I passed my entire life in. All this mehna that we are making today, it is for that. So that all of this can become entrenched within us. You know, Mahbub, he's sitting here. He is mother. I had a dream of her after her demise. And then I ask her that what happened? And then she says to me that when I was in my qabr, the farishta, and the angels came. Uh, I was very scared and taken aback. But I just said to them that I read Yasin and came. I read Surah Yasin and came. Allahu Akbar. So it shows us the importance of these surahs and these duas. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to make the dua. Allahumma a'atini imanan la yartaddu wa yaqeenan laysa ba'dahu kufrun wa rahmatan analu biha sharfa karamatika fi dunya wal akhira. Oh Allah bless me with such iman after which there is no irtidad and apostasy. Such yaqeen that there is no disbelief after it and such rahmat by means of which I can gain 
the honor of your grace in this world and in the akhirat so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam also possessed this fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should make an effort so that we can also acquire this fear in our hearts so it is this fear and hope as well allah ta'ala keep us established on the deen and let us practice on the demands give us the tawfiq and inspiration to practice on the demands of the deen and the shariat so the hadith of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam alamatul munafiq thalath that uh, the signs of a hypocrite are three that when he speaks that uh, uh, when he promises then uh, he goes against his uh, promise he goes against his promise if somebody gives him an amanat he makes a khianat of it and if he speaks he lies and in another hadith this is even mentioned that if he has to start quarreling then at that time there uh, he would also become uh, vulgar now when i went to canada on on one of the at one of the places i spoke on this hadith monana abdullah saab was there i kapodrawi i said to him or i said to someone else that uh, maybe these people felt uh, offended of what i had to say and they were so appreciative rather saying that monana all these characteristics are in our people nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is mentioned aktiru dhikr hazim al lazat mention or remember in abundance that which is the destroyer of all uh, desires meaning maut so we have to meditate maut and death imam ghazali has written extensively on this as well now let us read for some while surah fatiha etc and we through the wasila of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his barakat we ask uh, we, we send this year to hazar maulana we pass on the reward to him now let us recite thereafter there is silence for some while in that majlis hazar wala is reciting and others as well thereafter hazar wala then ends off by making dua and sending that thawab to maulana تمرحوم ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتوب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم بحرمه سيد النبي الكريم صلى الله عليه